There's a lot of different weather conditions we can encounter out there in the winter and we want to be prepared for all of them. There's a layering system because we're limited in the backcountry with what we can bring. You know, we can't bring an entire closet full of clothes. We want to have layers that serve multiple purposes that we can either use individually or in conjunction with other layers to fit weather conditions from hot and sunny to a windy, cold snowstorm. Your base layer is typically a mid to lightweight wool or polypropylene long sleeve shirt, a mid to expedition weight fleece or wool shirt that adds an additional layer of warmth. Beyond those, a wind shirt that's very lightweight, it just provides great wind protection. An additional insulating layer is a lightweight puffy jacket. Thinner, it can be synthetic, it could be down, it could even be a fleece jacket. It's not so heavy that I, I can't wear it while I'm moving. My ultimate puffy layer is a big synthetic fill insulated jacket or down parka with a hood. It's big so it can fit over all of your layers and that is what I put on to really stay warm when I'm hanging out at camp. One other layer for the top is a shell jacket of some sort so it's uninsulated. The soft shell is not 100% uh, waterproof. It's more breathable than a hard shell or Gore-Tex jacket and I find that the soft shell is very functional in the winter when we're dealing with temperatures below freezing and we're not getting rained on. On our hands, we recommend our students bring two liner gloves, two warmer gloves or mittens, either fleece or wool, a big insulating mitt, and then a shell mitten to go over top of that. The liner gloves are because you always want something on your hands. The warmer gloves start to add some insulating layers because the liners aren't very warm. And then the shell mitts provide some waterproofing for variety of activities. I typically bring two warm hats. One is a lightweight hat that I can wear while I'm exercising. And those hats can be made of pretty much anything, as long as they're not made of cotton. And then on a really cold day, I have a fleece neck gaiter. The ultimate compliment is having hoods in your various upper body layers. I start out with a very similar base layer to the top, lightweight to midweight, made out of either wool or a synthetic material. If you're a colder person, you probably want to bring an extra insulating layer, like an expedition weight fleece tight. I have soft shell pants, and similar to the top layers, you can get hard shell, which is like a Gore-Tex, or the soft shell, which is more breathable and less waterproof. And I find that the soft shell works really well in the winter environment, again, because we have freezing temperatures. Your top layer on the bottom, you have a big set of puffy pants, and they want to be big enough to fit over all of your other bottom layers. Cotton is the one material that we do not want to bring into the backcountry. When cotton gets wet, it takes a while to dry. And if you're having a wet layer of fabric against your skin, that's going to pull heat away from your body. Both wool and synthetic materials are great materials in the field. Wool is a natural fiber. I think it feels more comfortable against my skin. It has natural antibacterial properties, and so it doesn't get as smelly. Cons of wool, I would say, are that it tends to be a little bit heavier, it's not as durable, and the wool also tends to be a little more expensive. Polypropylene is a great synthetic insulating material. It tends to be pretty lightweight, it's very durable, and it tends to be less expensive than a natural fiber such as down or wool. I'd say the cons to polypropylene are that they tend to get smelly pretty quickly and they hold on to body odor. Down is a great insulating layer. It can be really good in a puffy jacket. One of the cons of down is that when it gets wet, it no longer insulates you. So a lot of times we encourage students to use synthetic fill materials that are a bit heavier, but just as warm, but they do have that benefit of if they get wet, you're still gonna stay warm. 
poly pro or your wool base layer tries to move the moisture away from your skin so that it can evaporate and not make you cold. The first way to dry things out is with your own body heat. Wearing a, a wet article of clothing is your best way to dry it out. Obviously, if you're struggling to keep warm yourself, prioritize being warm and drying that wet layer out later. We have the majority of the layers that we've just talked about for rent. You can come to your Knowles course with not a single layer and be fully outfitted to head out into the mountains.